Hello, this is Sam from Forum Labs Dental, and in this video I'm going to be going over how to make removable dye models in a 3-shape dental system for the Form 3B. And before we get started, a couple quick notes. Um, in this demo, I'll be using 3-shape dental system 2019. Some of the older versions, um, generally the steps are pretty similar. But something that's really important for removable dyes is in 2019, they enabled the ability to adjust uh, friction of uh, removable dyes dependent on the size of the dye. So pretty much, uh, long story short on that, is, is you will get better consistency between uh, anterior and posterior dyes using 3Shape 2019 or newer. So if you're using 2017 or 18 or whatever, uh, consider upgrading if you're having um, dye fitment issues uh, from small to large. Um, with that said, uh, it is also very important to download and import the Form Labs Form 3B uh, Three Shape DME or library. And in the uh, description of this video and the documentation with restorative models, there will be instructions on where that file is, how to download it, and also how to import it into your Three Shape system. So refer to that. Um, and really the, the goal here is to make really nice, consistent, beautiful, removable dye models for uh, restorations, uh, similar to the photo uh, that you see here. So uh, with that said, let's get started. So now as you see, we have uh, Three Shape Dental Manager open and you create a new order uh, like normal. So nothing different here. You set up the case uh, with your restorations and, and uh, everything else and materials like normal. Uh, the only difference is on the top left here, you will see uh, object type is set right now to model. To build a model, you really need to do it from an impression or a digital impression. And for this workflow, we're going to be doing it from a digital impression. Uh, if you have an antagonist or not, uh, I do, so I want to have an antagonist. And again, so you set up your order like normal. So I'm just going to do a simple coping for this demo. Uh, on the bottom right here, you'll see model. This uh, tells 3Shape that you want to generate a model after designing the restoration. And there are a couple different options here. Uh, so first is it comes in default with removable die selected. This first box uh, selected or, or highlighted in blue means that it's on. This is removable die. Uh, this is actually section or cut. We don't use this typically. And then this third one is unsections or solid model. And lastly, this tells 3Shape that it wants uh, to generate uh, extra die or a die to fit into the removable die socket, right? And you can even have solid model and removable die model selected and it'll uh, generate both file types. But for this, we're just gonna make a removable die model. And the last important step here is on the right, this plus pull down, you want to make sure the material selected is Formlabs model. Uh, manufacturer and manufacturing process should uh, always just be default to Formlabs. And then CAD settings, this is extremely important for removable dies. We actually provide a couple different uh, offsets or tightness uh, or lack of tightness. And if you haven't already, you should refer to um, I have a guide on a control or test model that you can print that you can find your optimal um, setting here for, for, for removable dies and you can make it as consistent and, and seamless as possible. So for, for my printer fleet, I found that uh, 0 0.055 or the tight setting is ideal for me. So I will select that and we are now, uh, the order is now set up and ready to design and create a model. Okay, now that our order is set up and made, um, it brings you next into the CAD step of the design. So the way 3Shape works is you uh, work through and design your restorations uh, before building a model. And there's a couple steps in CAD that are important to consider for model building. Uh, first is this first stage, there's a couple of things you can do. Uh, refined scans over here on the left, either upper or lower, um, can remove degeneracies, fill holes, uh, especially if it's kind of a rough uh, um, you know, intraoral, 3D intraoral scan or something like that. Um, trim is actually uh, very important, but first, uh, occlusal alignment is critical. So make sure uh, your occlusal plane is, is uh, you know, um, 
parallel to the actual occlusal plane of the uh, jaw, and also your restorations in the, are in the right place because this will be really critical for removal dies because that's how it puts the pin in and it generates the base and, and many other things down uh, down the road here. So uh, one other step here is trimming the jaw. So why this is very important is the more that you can trim off, the shorter the model will be, the less material will use, the faster it will print. And it's really pretty simple. Once you go into the stage, you can just left click and drag to what you want to uh, the new perimeter to be to. Uh, and one more note for removable dies is uh, we really want the insertion axis of the die to be a, a parallel to um, or, or vertical from the occlusal plane. And so sometimes when you're dealing with the anterior teeth like this, the gingiva kind of slopes back in. That can give you a thin spot. So trimming up to um, as much as you feel comfortable with, with still being able to do the, the case appropriately uh, is really ideal for these situations. So it, you know, it makes the, the print faster, uh, uses less material, and also um, in the end, uh, you, you won't run into to thickness or, or thin uh, issues uh, for removable dye generation. So once you uh, trim and prepare your, your scan or your case, uh, you can also sculpt, which is adding or removing material. But once this is uh, looking pretty good, you can move on to the next step. And the last uh, step that I want to talk about for models specifically, and not designing restorations, uh, is the segmentation step. So uh, a little counterintuitively, there's actually two stages in design when building models for marking the margin. This first one that I'm about to go into is segmentation. And I like to mark the margin as normal here. And this is really where the die gets cut out from, or the preparation gets cut out from the mesh. So if you wanted to have the cutout or the, uh, the actual um, you know, edge of the die to be different than the margin, then you would mark it outside of where you want the margin to be. But in most cases, you want it to be, um, you know, uh, uh, cut exactly from the margin and ditched and everything else. So I just recommend doing it here. Um, and it defaultly comes in on, on a mode, if you see here on the left, to click on the top to guess the margin. I actually find that this second tool, click on margin, works much better for me. Uh, of course, it might depend on the case, but so with this one on, I, you just left click once on the margin and it actually does a pretty good job of guessing the margin and you can just come, come around and, and do your small uh, you know, changes where you need it f to the margin. And of course, this is a pretty idealized case with very little impingement of tissue or anything like that, but uh, that's how demos go most of the time. So that's it for, for um, things to consider in design. So you would just go through the case like normal, design your restoration, and at the end it pushes you into Model Builder we'll, where we will pick this back up. Okay, now we are in Model Builder uh, after the design stage for our removable die model. Uh, and the first stage allows you to do some of the functions that you uh, had may have done already in the CAD section. So you can trim the edge of the mesh again if you wanted to. Say you didn't do it in the, in the CAD stage. You can set the occlusal plane or, or change it. Uh, again, if you did this all in CAD, uh, there is really uh, not much to do here and you could just click through. I do sometimes like to check my occlusal plane uh, just to confirm that it is where it should be. It is also important to note that if you, say, set up the casing correctly with the wrong offsets for some reason and you wanted to change them, you have to go back all the way to this step, change it, and then move back through the case. That's very, very important. Uh, and how you do that is up on the top right, File. You actually um, go to Virtual Trim Settings and under on the bottom right, I'm sorry, on the bottom of this menu, uh, you can actually pick uh, different offsets that we have preset for, for model building for the Form 3B. And so let's just say, hey, I actually wanted to set a, a, a bit tighter at 0 0.065. Uh, you hit load and then OK, and then it'll apply those new offsets moving forward. But if you do this later in the step, it might not properly apply it. So very important for removable dies. So I'm going to go forward here. The next step um, before it generates the dies is it allows you to make a neighboring tooth removable. So the way that works, and if you want to have, uh, say, your neighbor here 
uh, removal is on the bottom left. It's this little plus button. You click on neighbor, and then you click on the top of the tooth. And something that's really important here is it's actually looking based on your view. So look from, say, the insertion direction, click in the middle, and if you have a good view, it should actually do a pretty good job of guessing the perimeter. And as you can tell, uh, this has done a pretty good job. So I'm happy with this. I'll just have one removable adjacent tooth for this case, uh, since I'm just doing the rearmost molar as the demo. And we're going to hit next. And so the next stage is it generates the dies. So, okay. Uh, it generates the die for the restoration and also now our adjacent tooth die based on the parameters set in the materials library that you should have loaded in from Form Labs Dental uh, for three shape. Uh, and the Form 3B version. Uh, after the dies have been generated, you have the opportunity to change the insertion direction. It is really, really important that you try to keep the insertion of the dies. Remember, this is different than the insertion of the restoration, but the insertion of the dies um, as vertical or, or sort of um, uh, from the plane, it's pretty much don't move the angle if you can. And if you do have to uh, change the angle, do it most 10 degrees. Um, uh, try to keep this as straight as possible. It will help keep the consistency of, of the fitment of dies overall. So um, I don't have any sort of issues here. This insertion looks totally great. So I'm just going to hit OK. Um, and now those dies are generated. The next step is the articulator interface, where you're able to engrave on the model. Um, and it takes the name of the file by default, but you can edit it here. And the text depth, it should come in default as negative one, but if it doesn't like this, make sure it's a negative one. So really what that does is it makes it a, um, a, a push in feature instead of a push out. So it uh, is a negative feature instead of a positive. And you can left click and drag the uh, the text here if you want. You can also add an articulator um, in this step as well, although I will note there are some articulators in the next step as well, like the vertex uh, ball attachment articulator. So once you're happy with that, you hit OK. It engraves the model and it brings us to the final step in model building, which uh, is, is final sculpting of the upper or lower if, if you desire. And there are a couple uh, useful tools in this step, which I'll quickly go through. Um, okay, so we are in final sculpt here. Uh, and a few tools are just quickly to go through. Uh, say if we want to do it on the lower uh, or the upper, you just click on whichever one you're, you you want to use. The first tool is the wax knife tool to add or subtract material. The next is to remove artifacts. This is very, very uncommon. Third is attachments, uh, and this is where you would find the vertex attachment for you know the uh, snap-in ball uh, hinge articulator, very useful. And then lastly, the one I'll show you quickly is the plane cut tool. This is great if you want to shorten your model um, a little bit or add a bevel or chamfer on the edge to make it easier to remove from the build platform. I don't recommend doing a plane cut on the operative arch because the the die, the amount of room that and, and uh, length that the die needs is, is pretty set and tuned, but you can trim, um, uh, say, the base of the, uh, you know, the opposing arch, and what you do is you left click and drag what you want to cut, and if it does the opposite side, say it's cutting uh, the important part, uh, just swap cut direction, switches it around, so I'll show you what that looks like. So if it comes in like this, that's bad, right? You want to click uh, swap cut direction. And these are all really pretty optional, uh, depending on what you want to do. If uh, you're happy with what you got and, and everything else, you can just hit OK through this step. Or uh, if you make your changes, of course, you hit Next. It saves the file. And then the next step, it just closes uh, Model Builder and brings you back to Dental Manager, where we will pick, up, pick that up. OK. Now we are back in Dental Manager with our removable die uh, model made. And just like you would generate a manufacturing file for, say, a restoration that you designed and you were going to send to a mill or a printer or a milling center, you go to Advanced, Generate CAM Output, or F7. And then once that thinks of it, about it for a second, you right-click again, go to Advanced, Explore CAM brings up 
the folder where our files are that we want. And I'll just show really quickly what that looks like. I have uh, Preform opened here, and this is the folder that it just opened up for me. And just really quickly, uh, the first file here with the tooth number on it is the restoration. This is the uh, antagonist or antag. Model upper jaw is the um, upper, and in this case, the operative arch. And neighbor is the neighboring or adjacent tooth. And tooth 16 is actually the die uh, for the number three restoration. So um, what you want is to bring in these four files into Preform. Uh, or any other software, you can ignore the PTS files. We do not need those. So um, bring those in, and you can see it actually comes in at the correct orientation and everything else. And we have now our uh, die for our restoration, our adjacent tooth. Uh, whoops, don't want to do that. I just uh, did an undo there. And there's our uh, opposing arch, uh, antagonist, and operative arch. So this would be ready to go into preparing this job for printing, uh, which I have another video on if you continue along on the restorative model uh, guide. I hope this was helpful, and um, thank you so much for watching.